This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like, you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back. So you can work on yourself instead of working against yourself. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Death. Taxes. Ah, uh, it's gonna happen in it. <laughs> Both are inevitable. Both are no good. <laughs> Both are no good. I might know about that. I know about both of those things. You do. I've met people who have died, and I've uh, always pay me taxes. So yeah, I do know about those. If you did, if you did an episode on taxes and death, I'd have a bit of information to give you. <laughs> They'd both be angry bits of information. None yeah. of them would be joyous. No one likes when someone dies, and well, some people. Some when Hitler died, people were happy, weren't they? Yeah, I think we we're pretty happy. Well, some people weren't. Oh no, some people weren't. But Hitler, he wasn't. Probably he probably was having a shit day. Yeah. How was Canada? Uh, no Hitler. No Hitler. Yeah. Um, it was good. Yeah, Canada was wonderful. The people, the good Canadian folks, they always come out. I've got to give credit where credit's due. Good on you, Canada. You always sharp. You're always a good crowd. You never give me any shit. You All just, the cities? All the cities. Yep. All Canada's good. Montreal. Sunbury. Mon- Montreal's Kingston. coming up. No, no. I just you've, did them? You've done them. Oh, they, they went all right. <laughs> <laughs> that was that one guy in Sudbury. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> no, yeah, you did two two runs of Canada. Yeah. All, right. all right, you've definitely done one. You've done both. I just I just did a run. I tell you what, it's a hard country to get around. It's not it's not <laughs> an easy flyable country, Canada. Thunder, yeah. Thunder Everything Bay has no cars. Thunder Bay, you can't even like get a car to pick you up from the airport. They're like, nah. Our normal car service, I emailed them. Go, we have we have no limo service. They're like, this Jonas doesn't work on Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, I got an and email. I'm like, but it's Thursday. <laughs> oh, any day with a T. <laughs> I got an email from the limo company going, yeah, so there's no, our partners don't work here. Are you okay if a 2017 silver Kia Sorento picks them up? <laughs> As like, they pick you up. I was like, some, they just hire some random dude. I'm like, uh, We know a guy. something out. Uh, you got shows coming up. You got a show in Thousand Oaks, October 5th. Thousand Oaks. I think that one's, uh, if not sold out, very, very close to being sold out. So if you want to come to Thousand Oaks. Uh, right. October 6th, Oakland, California. October 7th, Anaheim, California. Anaheim, we added a show. One show sold out. The other one's not sold out just just yet. But uh, mm-hmm. come along. I don't know how Oakland's going, but come along. Come along. But I do know that Thousand Oaks is almost sold out. And then out. October 19th, you're in Cincinnati. And the 20th and 21st, Chicago. The good city is Cincinnati. And Chicago, my kind of town. Yeah, there's two shows in Chicago. One is n- one is is all sold out. One is not close to being sold. Get out, out there, Chicago! So come out to the other ones. And then you're off to Tel Aviv. Ah, I mean, I'm going to Tel Aviv. I'm going to tell everyone. Tell you, uh, tell Adam. <laughs> yeah, tell yeah. I'm going to tell them all. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell them all. Stop fighting, you two. <laughs> And then our uh, poker expert, Clayton Fletcher, he has a book coming out on October 17th called The ROI of LOL, How Laughter Breaks Down Walls, Drives Compelling Storytelling, and Creates a Healthy Workplace. Um, so you can pre-order, pre-order that now. On, healthy like, Workplace? Yeah. What are you so, talking about? Every time I've had a joke in the workplace, I get in trouble. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not here. <laughs> uh, yeah, get Clayton's book. Um, and, oh, then- and also, uh, I just wanted to, a little housekeeping. We I had an expert. Uh, from a few years ago reach out and say that one of our listeners went to their personal business page and left a one star review because and the review said heard them on the podcast they seemed nice enough but I didn't like they didn't like the answers basically that they gave oh, and well. gave a one star review don't fucking do that you're making us uh, look bad don't it's do rude that, you don't, buddy. You don't yeah. do it don't tell them <laughs> don't don't do that. Don't tell them. Be nice. Yeah. yeah, be nice to our guests. It's hard enough to get people to come on here. Good be God. nice. <laughs> <That's> so stupid. <laughs> um, anyway, speaking of uh, people, people that bad comments have left about bad bad comments have left about Forrest. Hey, I'll be, I'll be in. Uh-oh. Where am I going to be? Mike drop. Healthiest man Octo- alive. Having October a stroke 13th, on air. <laughs> October thirteenth and fourteenth. October thirteenth and fourteenth. San Diego. Mike drop. Please come out to those shows. And then October 19th, I'll be at the Orlando Improv. One what's night with only. Your, what's with your different shades of blue today? It's I, the blue laundry day. day. Rainbow blue. I just I had a hat. You know, the laundry day. Do you have an actual day for it? 
I just need to do laundry. I just need to do yeah, laundry. So I, just, I find it weird when we go have a laundry day. Um, but Wait, go to forestshaw.net. There's uh, San Diego and Orlando, if you know those areas, come out in October have shows. And oh, also, another person, we saw him on the way out. Uh, our, our, our good buddy, uh, Joe, Joe Bartnick. Bartnick. Special is out. He was our hockey expert, but he's also a very funny comic, and it's called uh, Killing in Chicago. Killing in Chicago. So check out his special pew, as well. Pew, pew. Sure. All right. All right. Um, please welcome our guest, Mike Miley. G'day, Mike Miley. Mm. Now it's time to play. Hi. Yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Maybe yes, no. don't know. Judge I don't know anything, Baba. Hello, hello, Mike Miley. You have a poster of Flight of the Concords behind you. I do. That's right. Is, is it Flight of the Concords? Because I know a little bit. Of, I know the Flight of the Concords. I've met both of them several times. Is it Flight of the Concords? Oh, no, I wish. That would be awesome. But unfortunately, no. Oh, okay. No. One of them's extremely nice and the other one's kind of evil. No, they're both very nice guys. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Uh, okay. So it's not Fly of the Concords, but you're a Fly of the Concords enthusiast? That won't help you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. So you like uh, Australasian comedy? I do. I like, uh, yeah, I like Flight of the Concords and uh, some of those early wacky Peter Jackson movies. Um, Are you trying to ask him if he likes you, Jim? I was, but he doesn't seem to be, <laughs> he doesn't seem to be going down that path. <laughs> he likes, he, he likes, meet, meet the Furbies, the, fur, the Feebles, the Feebles. The early one. You ever seen Meet the Feebles? I don't know what you're talking about. No it's Peter it Jackson's first movie and it's like a whole lot of puppets that just fuck each other. What? <laughs> Before Lord of the Rings and everything, yeah. Peter yeah. Jack, Meet the Feebles or something like that. Sure. It's, yeah, that's right. It's yeah. a dark movie mm -hmm. and it's like mascots and puppets and there's like jizz involved. And what? Just, it's, it's out there. Well, puppet jizz, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, look within for this topic. Um, <laughs> look within. Is it the human heart? <laughs> two in. That's two in. No, oh, oh, oh. I mean, this is like, this is, is you. Is it the human skeleton? No, this is about you now. Is it me? Am I the specialty subject? No, but like in a way. Something you do. Yeah, it's something you do now. Is it? Is it shitting yourself? Is it parenting? <laughs> it is. Parenting? It's no, 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 it's not. <laughs> something you do now, Kelly yeah. said. Talking into microphones. You've been doing that Think for broader. a while. Yeah. yeah. In private, Hitler moustache. No, nah, you just did it in Australia. Hitler moustache. <laughs> <laughs> no. Game show hosts. Yeah, we're talking about game shows. All right, I love game shows. Yeah, I know lots about game shows. I'm a game show host. We'll see. We'll see. I do because I, I do my I do my pickups uh, where I have to do for like uh, I, I, when I most of the time when I do my game show voice is when I'm doing my pickups, and so whenever all the contestants leave the studio, I have to do this. Now it's time for the forty percent question. <laughs> yeah, and then, I, I, then I turn his face, and then I'm like, now it's time for the fifty percent question. <laughs> and I go like that. I get very game showy in that type of thing. Well, how so, do you do it when people are there? I just go, all right, next question. <laughs> You're like a teacher trying to wrangle them. Yeah. Like if, if you could watch an unedited version of uh, of the One Percent Club, have you seen the One Percent Club? It just won awards in in a, in Britain, the British version. Oh no, I'm sorry, I haven't. Do you know of it? It's about to be, I do. It's yeah. about to be it's about the about to be American version. Um, but I'm the I'm the Australian host and yeah, I knows. I looked up on Wikipedia and there are all the different hosts from all over the world and I look I I clicked on all the different hosts like the German host, the French host, the this the Israeli host, those those none of those cunts look funny at all. They all just look like TV presenters. I'm the only one that looks like I've fallen out the back of a cab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With a Hitler mustache. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Let me introduce Mike properly. Mike Miley is the author of Truth and Consequences, Game Shows in Fiction and Film. His writing has appeared in The Atlantic.com, Critique, Literature, Film Quarterly, Music and the Moving Image, and The Smart Set. He can also be seen in the CNN documentary Glitch, The Rise and Fall of HQ Trivia, and you can find him on Twitter. It says he's not calling it X. I'm with you, Mike. Twitter <laughs> at Mike C. Miley. And his website is MikeMiley.com. Uh, thanks for being here, Mike. Is HQ, that, is that that one that we all yeah. played on the line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a documentary yeah. that Mike's in. Oh, yeah. really? Because it came out and everyone played it for five minutes and it. then it just left us. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I found him. I was watching it on HBO and I was like, all right, oh, it's reach HBO, out to him. HBO yeah, it's on Max. How did, right. how did this become like a field of like, interest to you, Mike? 
Uh, I, I mean, I think it mostly started with being an only child and having an obscene amount of time by myself in the summer to just sit down and watch movies and, and game shows by myself. Um, so a lot of it kind of stemmed from that. And then when I, I wound up starting to write about an academic article about how different people you have different writers and filmmakers used the game show to talk about family the article kept getting longer and longer and longer and then it was like a third of a book and so i thought well if there's if i can think of a few more things to talk about here i will have enough for a book and uh, it turns out there's way more to talk about than you can fit into a book yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big game show guy i'm a big game show guy I, I my biggest problem is with the show i do the questions are really long and i'm a terrible reader if anyone's heard me do ads on this show and uh, I would have been a good host of Is It, is it Cake? I could, have ho I could have host Is It Cake or a game show that I haven't brought out yet, but we're trying to sell it, uh, Fat or Pregnant. Now, what happens is someone comes out, right? And we, well, I'm not going to say what sex they I think they we are. got it, yeah. I'm not going to say yeah. what sex they are because I don't want to make this political, Yeah, right? This but political. of course, it's a game show with one question. They come out and one question, Is It Cake? Yep. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> it's battle pregnant. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, too much cake. Was it cake? <laughs> ah, is it? Was it? Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. I'm going to ask Jim. Battle pregnant. If I see that on a channel, you stole it from me. It's my idea. Yeah, well, that'll, that'll get you in court. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike, I'm going to ask Jim a series of questions about game shows. And at the end of his answers, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, zero through 10, 10 being the best. Kelly's going to grade him on confidence. I'm going to do et cetera. We'll add them all together, Jim. Zero through 10, dumber than a fifth grader. 11 through 20, smarter than a sixth grader. 21 through 30, one percent club, buddy. Yeah, you ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Pregnant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what were the first game shows, and where did they appear? I'd be vaudeville, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> you always say vaudeville. It's part of it. Vaudeville. Vaudeville. Okay, you're talking on television, or because otherwise, That's, I said, where did they appear? Ah, oh, it would have been radio. It would have been the first ones. It okay. would have been during the Colgate Hour or something like that. And it would you have know been any of the names. Or? No, there would have been a few of them. Let's make a deal. Let's do a thing. Da 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 da. -da. Brought to you by cigarettes. <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> you yeah. enjoy having clean lungs. <laughs> cigarettes. Dirty those guys up. Yeah. What okay? What is considered the first ever televised game show, and when did it air? Uh, televised game show, televised game show. Okay, so uh, I'm. It would have been that. It would because you got you got a few different types. All right, so you've got like. Do we include like things like the match game? Which mm -hmm. have got like yeah, celebrities so. on so, it, yeah. yep. or am I telling the truth, or any of those ones, yeah. those old ones with Lucille Ball just sitting there smoking, just ah, I think that you're a puppet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it'll be one of those ones, but I, I can't tell you that. I don't know that. To Do be you know, so you don't know the host of the first televised game show either. Or ah, who Mer was? Merv Griffin. Maybe one or two. Mer right? Merv Griffin. Okay. Can you name a few of the earliest popular game shows from the 1950s and 60s? In this country, no, but I can tell you the ones from Australia. And maybe, maybe well, that's the ones that I used to watch in the 1950s. Yeah. Uh, but, kangaroo sack. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. You had to cut off the kangaroo's uh, balls, and were they real or not, and were they filled with coins? No. Kangaroo sack. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. Uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Yeah. How much can a koala bear? It's a bear show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, 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 and it's, it's like it's like it's like how many cigarettes you can put out in a koala before it starts to squeal. Oh my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right? Australia. Australia's brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we this is what we used to put on the telly. <laughs> the game and the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> the game show there, there was a game show called the sixty four thousand dollar question. It yeah. originally appeared on the radio under what title? Oh, uh, the currency would have changed. Uh, uh, it would have been the the six dollars forty question, mm, okay. but with inflation over over the years, it had to go up. Okay. <laughs> uh, what was the Federal Communications Commission versus American Broadcasting Company? What was that court case about? Could have that been about the guy that cheated on the Jeopardy like show? It wasn't Jeopardy, but he, he seemed to be getting fed all the answers. Okay, we'll put yeah, that in there. Put that one. Um, which game show host holds the Guinness? world record for the longest career as a television game show host. Bob Barker. Okay. Who was the original host of Jeopardy when it premiered in 1964? 1964. Okay, so Jeopardy. 
No, it wasn't Trebek then. Trebek would, would have it's been... It's not Trebek, I'll tell you that. Yeah, Trebek so, no. would have... My wife loves Trebek. My wife fell in love with Trebek and then he died like a week later. Oh, she didn't know who he was until then? She, my wife's British and I, I watch Jeopardy every now and again while I'm cooking a meal or something. Yeah. It's like my background type of show I watch every yeah. now and again. And she's like, this guy is delightful. <laughs> <laughs> he she's like, oh my God, this is the most charming man I've ever met. She goes, she said, he gives me faith in the humankind that there's men like him out there. Mm. She thought he was wonderful and he died like a month later. Yeah, no, he's universally loved. So. Yeah, yeah, my wife loved Okay, him. so not Trebek, who is it? Um, Sandra Trebek. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Family business. Uh, what was the famous, quote, quiz show scandal and which popular game show was at the center of it? That was the one where the guy was being fed the questions. Do you know um, the name of it? I or? don't believe it's Jeopardy, but it was it was a question and answer game show. It wasn't a pick a box one. Uh, I don't know the name of the game show. I've seen the movie. And how did the quiz show scandal impact the game show industry? They would have brought in legal stuff. They would have brought in judicators and things like that where there would have been checks and balances that would have to be met because you're playing an actual game. It's the same as gambling in a casino mm -hmm. where the gambling commission can come in and go, these machines have to pay out this much and all that type of stuff. So, so on the 1% Club, right, if somebody, because uh, there can be two answers to questions. The famously Cliff Clavin, uh, these people who haven't been in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right, so someone will do a, a these people haven't been in my kitchen answer, yeah. and then the question will and they'll put their hand up, and I'll be like, Yes, and they'll be like, Oh, I believe that I have a different. And when they talk to me, I'm not allowed to talk questions. I go, All right, I stop talking. Uh, somebody else comes out, yeah, because it's, le it's all legal. It. I yeah. go, <laughs> and then I bring out an adjudicator, and then I sit back and uh, you know, eat candy. Behind the, the, mm. the bleachers. Okay, who was the first female host of a primetime game show? <laughs> well, you got Trebek. what? You, you got, okay, because you got <laughs> Jenny you Trebek. got you got Byak, Malin, Malin, Malkin Byak or whatever her name is doing Jeopardy now. Right. Half this is a while ago. Half the time. Um, I'm going to say it was Joan R Rivers. Uh, your face or mine? Do you know? <laughs> that's a real. That's a real name of a quiz show in Britain, yeah. by the uh, way. Okay. Do you know who Chuck Barris was? Yeah, the king of rock and roll. No, Chuck Barris. Yeah, the king yeah. of rock okay. and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. no, 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 no. So you don't know who he is. I need to get paid ten grand in a briefcase. What game show <laughs> involved young contestants navigating a maze filled with booby traps? What? Say that again. Game show involved young contestants navigating a maze filled oh, yeah. with booby traps. I want to say. I, I want to say the double dare. Okay. And what was the object of the game? Bumper stumpers. <laughs> I'd like uh, this one actually. Bumper stumpers. Yeah. Uh, Something we might do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys would totally do this on the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, oh, it's getting a foreskin dick to wrap around the head of a, a non foreskin dick. I'm glad you caught that. Wow, that's it. All right. Do you want me to keep answering yes, questions? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm loving this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was the first game show to win a daytime Emmy Award for best game show, and what year was it? Uh, Wheel of Fortune, 1976. Daytime. Okay. Wheel of Fortune. Uh, yeah. And it was uh, Pat Sajak. <sighs> that was a daytime show originally? Why not? They Sun's still up, baby. <laughs> um, Unless you live in Alaska. <laughs> which one has won the most daytime Emmys for best game show, and how many has it won? Well, I guess it's not. Okay, it's going to be Price is Right. Price okay. is Right is daytime. I, I messed you up. I, I, I threw you off on these anyway. Yeah. So I just <laughs> pri 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 price is, the Price is Right. The Price is Right. What game show gave Jimmy Kimmel his start in television? Um, I'm going to tell you something. I was on a game show. I've told you this before. Uh -huh. I was on a game show in Australia called Vidiot. Vidiot. Uh, and between me and you, I have a friend at the BBC, at the ABC in Australia. And between everybody else. On yeah. This, yeah. And they <laughs> have found the footage. <gasps> and it's being sent to me. Yeah. What wow. footage? The footage of me 14 years oh, okay, old on a, nice. on a game yeah, yeah. show. Cool. All right. What do you mean? Sick. What footage? The, the guy molesting me behind the set. I, I, I forgot. <laughs> I, we're taking him I was just waiting for the answer of what show gave Jimmy Kimmel. No, but I just remembered that. No, that's because, exciting. Because we'll was, he, was he a contestant or was he? No, 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 host? no, no, no. He was. He was not the host, but he was a part of the show. I was going to say I texted my mom on the way here I know the because show. I think I'm pretty sure that we were on the Bozo show when we were kids because mm. I remember playing like Bozo buckets. But I texted her to confirm because I'm not sure if that's like a. Mushroom flashback or something mm. like that. Bozo, so, no, like Bo Bozo bucket was so, your nickname in university. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Bimbo bucket. Thank you very much. Jimmy Kimmel was not the host, but he was uh, he was a part of the television show. Uh, 
Um, I don't think he was. Let's make Maybe I'm let's wrong. Let's he was on the television let's show. Let's make a deal. I might yeah, be yeah, wrong. He was the co-host. He yeah. was a co-host. Thank let's you, Let's make guy. a deal. Okay. What is the most expensive prize ever given away on a game show? One million dollars. That's a thing. It's a thing. One million dollars is full on a thing. That's a lot of things. That's a thing. Hang on. I'll give you a house. It was on the prices right. I'll give you that now. Oh, um, uh, well, they give away cars. Sure. It would have been an expensive car. Okay. A good car, Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Okay. What scandal occurred in the UK version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, there was some skullduggery. A guy cheated. <laughs> and uh, and what he did was uh, he had he, he, he they, they called a break. They said, oh, they said well, join us next time. This is Chris Tarrant was the host. Chris Tarrant said, join us next time on uh, Deal or No Deal and they went to an ad break. In that time that they had off from the show, he went to one of the other contestants that was sitting around the perimeter and said, hey, I'll give you the money if you know an answer and I don't know the answer, cough. When I... And so he's like this, I don't know, it might be A, I don't think it's A, it's probably B, I think it is B or C. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with C. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, what game show once hosted a serial killer during his killing spree? Uh, that was the dating game. All right, you're doing good here now. You got yeah. a couple. How did game shows evolve in the digital age with the rise of online quizzes and apps? Uh, H- HQ and all that type of Any stuff. Any other ones you know? Yeah. Well, there, there was, there's a company that's coming out that I believe was trying to sell things to Netflix. I was trying to invest, but then I, it didn't really happen. But yeah, it, I think uh, Jimmy Fox hosted a show that had, was like kind of yeah app, app thing. Yeah, you know the a, name a, of that one? App, the Shazam I, one, right? Yeah, yeah Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, yeah. Um, what role? And also, you can play along at home. You can even play Jeopardy on an app now, and then, you know, all these different things. What role have game shows played in pop culture with references in movies, TV shows, and music? Like they have been. <laughs> what do you mean in reference to? Okay, thanks. No, no. What do you mean by that question? Yeah, like just some examples. Ah, uh, some examples. Um, okay, so the Price Is Right Australia appeared in the movie The Castle, hosted by Larry Emder. Uh, and they did that and she won a holiday and that's how the movie starts out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Bob Barker was Music, in, TV Bo- shows. Bob yeah. Barker was in Happy Gilmore and he said, the price is right, bitch, and he punched out Adam Sandler. Uh, that's good. He got good stuff there. I what? was on an episode of the most popular episode of Celebrity Price is Right. No, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder I didn't get it right. <laughs> get it straight. I was like, it's $47. <laughs> what? <laughs> What real life game show host played the game show host in The Running Man? Oh, I don't know his name, but I remember that. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Bit of fun. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know who that is. Family Feud. Don't know who it is. Okay, can you name this is the last question? Can you name some recent game show controversies or scandals? Uh, I was employed to host one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there you go. That, that's weird. Um, I'll give you a hint. There was a Jeopardy one. Do you know that one? Um, uh, oh, 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 I know this. Um, um, they have a female host now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Price is right. There was a scandal. Uh, Two of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, um, Drew Carey uh, touched up a few of the models. All right. Mike Miley. <laughs> uh, how did Jim do in his knowledge of game Male shows? Male and female. He, didn't, he, 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 didn't, he wasn't sexist about it. Just like touching. How did Jim Jeffries, the host of the 1% Club, <laughs> do on his knowledge of game shows? <laughs> Zero through 10. 10's the best. Uh, well, it was looking really bleak for a while, and then he went on quite a run Man. toward the end and got four in a row yeah. with, um, I guess, I know I was given half credit for some of them along the way. Um, so it's like maybe a six and a half would be the total number right. Uh, Percentage wise, that's probably not six and a half percent. So uh, I don't know, maybe like a, we'll put it in the middle at a five. Five. Nice. All right. Well, that, does that get me through the next round? <laughs> we'll see. We're going to add up on the scores. Kelly, how are you doing confidence? Um, I'm going to give him a six on confidence. Damn. Okay, that's 11. And Jim, for you to get into the finals with etc. cetera. Yeah. A 25. All right. Wow. You made it to the final wow. round. You're part of the 1% wow. club. I was yeah, not expecting yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Congratulations, I get, Jim. I get, I get very invested when I host the game show in the people who are going to win the money. I imagine you would. Uh, Maybe in a year or two from now. Because it you takes won't. like three and a half hours to film an episode, right? Yeah. So you start to get to know these people as it goes along. And then you're like, you're like at the end, you're like, all right, I want you to win. I, yeah. I I don't want I don't want the the network to win. I want the the contestants to win. I well, think it's, I think, that I think it's I think it's better telly. They got to bring you back though. Yeah, more. but I can't. Yeah, but they, like the rules are rules. You yeah. you 
the audience wouldn't want a host that wants the network yeah, to yeah, win. Yeah. You know, it's like, this, <laughs> is, the, this is the best that's thing you can like, say. It's like a blackjack dealer. Who's <laughs> like, and we got ya. <laughs> <laughs> you followed the book, moron. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. All right, Mike. Uh, what were the first game show hosts and where did they appear? Jim sent vaudeville at first. Vaudeville, his words, not mine. Vaudeville. Radio, cool gate hour. Let's make a deal. Let's do a thing. Brought to you by cigarettes. <laughs> Brought to you by cigarettes. <laughs> Yeah, so this one, I, I think he got right. They, yeah, they wound up first being on radio and uh, with the sh- shows like Vox Pop, uh, Major Bo's Amateur Hour, or um, Uncle Jim's Question B. And some <laughs> of these were kind of like Family Feud, where they would just ask people on the street questions and uh, broadcast their answers. Others would be like call, I guess, call out shows where you call call some random number in the phone book. And if they could answer the phone and answer, and answer the question, they would win money, um, things like that. And some were more kind of like talent show sort of stuff. So they were not necessarily exactly what we would imagine a quiz show looking like today. But those are often thought of as the roots of them. And that's starting around like 1932. Uh, 1934 when they when they start coming out the 2023 version of that game is to call anybody and if you get somebody to pick up you win like because uh, now right, you, that's you, right you couldn't that's right. get anybody to uh, pick yeah. up a random I phone remember call. radio used to be like this they have to answer the phone with yeah. 2wb is my station yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> they have to answer like that you can never get that now no, no yeah. never <laughs> have to answer people, this text. People, people now people now don't talk first because they're worried it's a robot call trying to catch their voice or something <laughs> yeah so will you wait for them to go first? Um, and what is considered the first ever televised game show? And when did it air? Jim said uh, match game to tell the truth. Merv Griffin would have been a host. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To tell the truth is getting closer. Um, in the UK, there was a show called Spelling Bee in 1938 that was broadcast uh, for the US. It's uh, a show called Truth or Consequences, which winds up being the same or the the first game show twice because they did this experimental one time broadcast in July of 1941, basically to test the the airwaves more or less um, and see if this stuff worked. And then um, they did a real run of the show on CBS starting in 1950. Wow. And then can I get an extra point for knowing that Merv Griffin invented Wheel of Fortune? (laughs) <laughs> you already got to the next round. I know, but I'd like that. I'd like he wants that. the credit. No, I like that credit. Sure, we'll too. give it to you. I mean, I don't even know if that's correct. It is correct. Okay, it is. It's, on, right. it's on the credits. Um, and then, who was the first host of the first television? Merv Griffin. Game? You said Merv Griffin, but I don't know if that's right. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's a guy named Ralph Edwards is the host of Truth or Consequences, and he Buckwheel. also wound up hosting that show, This Is Your Life, that was a big uh, show in the 1950s. This is your life. I think they bring it back in Australia, but they've, they've, we had it in Australia as well. I don't remember what happens. Oh, okay, so what happens is you have a famous person, and it's, it's like they 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 they're sitting there, and they're having dinner with a friend, and then like this guy comes up with a book that just is, has in Boston it. This is your life, mm-hmm. right? And he'll come up and go, Forrest Shaw, this is your life. Oh, and wow. then all of a sudden, the celebrity, the celebrity, <laughs> it's it's a, it's a surprise TV show. So it's a surprise party for you on TV. Uh, okay. And then you they sit you down on your couch and you're like this, oh, I didn't know you. Whoa, what's going on? <laughs> and then they go, do you remember this voice? Oh, do your homework. You better do your homework. And, they'll, and the girl will go, no, I don't remember that voice. And they'll go, it's your fourth grade maths teacher, Mrs. Fuckwit, or whatever her name is, right? <laughs> and then he'll be like, ah, oh, I hardly remember, but it's a great show, and they bring back old school friends and stuff like that. All right. If you like the celebrity, it's interesting. Um, so Ralph Edwards was the host of that show. Mike, you're saying? That's right, yeah. Okay. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Uh, I'm a big fan of therapy. I've been going to therapy for many years. Every now and again, I stop going to therapy, and I always regret it. It's like going to the gym. You, you can only maintain. If you don't go to the gym, it's not like you're going to stay all buff, is it? It is, it, your brain's not going to stay good if you don't go to therapy. Uh, do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? Like you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work on yourself instead of working against yourself. Um, if you have benefited from therapy, right, you'd go do it again. If you haven't benefited from it, maybe you've got the wrong therapist. Maybe you should try a different therapist. Jack, you ever been to therapy? Yes. Did it help? It did, for sure. It did. Would you do it again? 100%. Exactly. See, here with BetterHelp, if you don't like your therapist, you can change therapists at any time. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched up to a licensed therapist and switch therapists 
anytime and no additional charge. So some people go, oh, I don't really, I, I tried therapy, it didn't work for me. Maybe you just tried the wrong therapist. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. How, um, how long did it take for us to have a host of color? Was it, uh, Who was the first one there? Ooh. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know whether Steve Harvey is the is the first or or whether Wayne, there's someone Wayne Brady is prior way before that. that. Oh, yeah, that's right. Wayne, yeah, Wayne Brady. Um, huh? What a yeah. Wayne Brady host. Wayne oh. Brady host. Let's make a deal. Oh, let's make a deal. Yeah, yeah I hardly ever watched. Yeah. So, yeah. There's got to be one. Yeah, I, I don't Adam know Wade that, yeah. was the first African American game show host uh, for a show called Musical Chairs in 1975. 1975. Okay. Oh, how, oh. Many, how many Asian hosts do we had? Um, this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just about, I, I was, doing inventory is, is, right is, now. Is the, is the Mass Singer a game show? Yeah. He's yeah. a he's a judge. Yeah. Uh, judge. He's a judge. Judge. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a judge. I I was on. Yeah. No, but he does host. Um, Can you see my voice? Because I was on that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was a fun day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can, Anybody who does game shows, I'm happy to show up. I enjoy him very much. I, I was I was almost in the running to uh, host the game show recently, but I didn't get the job. But can yeah, you name in a, America a few of the earliest popular game shows from the 50s and 60s? Jim said Kangaroo Sack. How much can a koala bear? I don't know. Putting cigarettes on him, and then Price is Right. Were any of those correct, Mike? Uh, well, Price is Right is is a relatively early one. Yeah, and then I guess earlier he had mentioned to tell the truth. Sadly, uh, the Kangaroo Sack does not appear to have uh, um, to have gone damn. to series. Um, yeah. But no, I just guess didn't, the, just didn't make it on the be... internet. Not everything's on the internet, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's uh, Tic Tac Doe Twenty One, the sixty four thousand dollar question. What's my line? Uh, those were some of the big early ones. How's, how's Tic Tac Toe different from Celebrity Squares? Uh, I think it was mainly uh, well, the the Tic Tac Doe didn't have the like the celebrities as the as the actual squares, but I think it was still basically a, a Tic Tac Toe game uh, based around answering questions. Yeah, and then the sixty four thousand dollar question originally appeared on the radio under what title? Jim said six dollars. And forty cents, pretty good, Jim. That's not the answer, right, Mike? It's almost uh, yeah, but it, but it's a. Re- I mean, it's the right line of thinking. Uh, it was. It started out on radio as the sixty-four dollar question. Yeah, oh, nice. terrible. So he answered right. it with the right spirit. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that's yeah. Legit. well. I always like say. So who wants to be a millionaire is the same all around the world. Yeah, uh, money's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the one percent club. It's like you want to. I, I can't say that because it's me. But but in Britain, it's in pounds. Yeah, that's that's the where you make the money. The British game shows are where you make the money. But I will say this about British game shows. So British game, so you, you're familiar with Countdown? Yes, I've heard. It. Yeah, I know of Countdown. Okay, so Countdown, you have to be a mathematical whiz, and you have to be a spelling savant. And at the end of it, uh, if you turn out to be the most intelligent man in all of Britain or woman in all of Britain, you get you win a dictionary. Yeah. Oh. See, that's, all, that's what I always think is the difference between American and British game shows is in Britain, you, you, you're you highly intelligent, you win a dictionary. And in America, it's like this, red door or blue door? Uh, red door. You win a car. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 car. <laughs> well, get more people to watch it. That I way. know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, bigger population. What was the Federal <laughs> Communications Commission versus the American Broadcasting Company? Uh, Jim said this is the guy that cheated, was being fed all the answers. Well, how is this court case important to game shows? Yeah, this court case, it predates a lot of the cheating scandals, but what the Supreme Court ruled there was that game show prizes didn't count as gambling. And so they could then open the floodgates and schedule and program as many game shows as they wanted. And this is what led to the payouts getting larger. So it, the $64 question became the $64,000 question after this court case um, allowed for this. And this winds up fueling the the popularity of game shows because people, yeah, people don't watch to see the the questions get answered. They watch to see people win large, large amounts of money. Oh, that's a banger. Oh, I, I still think Family Feud, I'm always like $25,000. No, 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 Family Feud's just a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know no, but they go crazy. Ah, we won. <laughs> I tell you, on a, lot, on, a lot of, on a lot of game shows, I'll tell you this for nothing, you don't get flown in or shit. They don't give you nothing. They don't give you hotel rooms, nothing. Uh, so yeah, they and and they then. force you to have that enthusiasm. I, Jack, oh, Tommy yeah. and I tr- like were meant to try out for this game show and we had to do 
a Zoom with them, and they were like, "Okay, now act really excited." And the th- can you imagine the three of us with Tommy and I were Tommy <laughs> and I just looked so pissed. <laughs> it's like they force you to be this like yeah. overly excited. Yeah, but they want you to. You, they want you to be a certain. Thing. I, I, okay, I will say this: Steve Harvey is the best that it will ever have been or ever will be. Okay, he is dude, yeah. the greatest game show host of them all. The way he stays smiling and still puttering in with jokes and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you answer a question, he's like, woo! Like, he's just like, <laughs> he's like, that. like, I'm telling you, as someone who hosts game shows. I think he's great. No, he's I, so entertaining. I yeah. admire Steve Harvey. <laughs> His reaction. I'm a Steve, are just I'm a, like I, I've never watched perfect. Steve Harvey stand up. I'm sure he's very good because yeah, he's, he's very funny. Thing. I'm sure he's very good. I don't watch a lot of stand up uh, for different reasons, but I, I, he is supreme yep. in the game show world. All right, next question. Like I went, I went for a game show. I went to host a game show, and then I was like, "This, you should just get Steve Harvey." Like halfway <laughs> through the interview, I just. <laughs> which, which game show host holds the Guinness World Record for the longest careers of television and game shows? You said Bob Barker. I don't think that's right, Mike. No, he was for a time. He did hold the record for a while, mm-hmm. and uh, then it was Trebek, uh, but it is now Pat Sajak. Uh, I think a couple years ago he passed them up. Pat Sajak's all right, man. He's all right. Jim he, did Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. He just shows up. Oh, he just nice. shows up. He doesn't say hello to you or nothing. And then halfway <laughs> through, he was just like this. We, we cut to an ad break. He goes, I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch your stand-up. He goes, you're interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, they contacted you, you after the show? No, no, he never. Oh. He never. But uh, uh, they, were all, they were all so nice. Vanna White and all that. They are all so nice. And um, uh, here's a little thing that I'll tell you. Because uh, Jack was there, right? Everyone's the same height. You don't realize it. You're all on these electronic platforms. Oh yeah. Yeah. That make you go up and down. Yeah. So everyone uh, looks yeah, yeah. The, everyone looks the same height. Yeah, yeah I never right? thought about that. Yeah. yeah. Everyone looks the same height. Here's another one for you. That wheel is as heavy as fuck. <laughs> At the end of it, my my I got a little bit of arthritis in my hands. My hands were hurting because it's and some people get the little stick they put over the top yeah. to soften the blow. Yeah. I went I went stickless. Yeah. Fuck me. Yeah, you spun it a lot though. I spun it yeah, so you much. Kept spinning it and spinning because you didn't know the answer. I didn't know the answer. <laughs> yeah, oh, so Mike, I mean, we told the story on here before, but you could tell Mike. I mean, you, you definitely got to okay. watch his yeah. episode. It's so, very good. So I, I think I'd won a million dollars twice. Like I'd, I'd taken. You the, didn't win it. You you wouldn't I'd, want it. To I'd taken it. the million off the board, and then I had another chance of the million. They said you can't get the million twice, and I kept on going back in for the answer. And everyone else in the in the room knew the answer. And by the way, I knew the answer for the final quiz as well. I would have gotten it right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I I couldn't I couldn't crack it because it was a common phrase. You want to know what the common phrase was? <laughs> That's the best pineapple I've ever had in my mouth. <laughs> To this day, if, if I ever hear one cunt in the wild <laughs> say that's the best pineapple I've ever had in my mouth. It's common. It's a it's common, common phrase, right? And yeah. I kept on thinking, maybe it's an American thing that I've missed out on, right? Because, like, for instance, my son said he's having a pep rally and I didn't know what the fuck that was, right? And, and so have you ever heard the saying? No, he was just not shaking his head. No. Have you ever heard that? No, the, no, I, I have never heard that. Right. And everyone looked at me like I'm an idiot. And I, I had this moment because I was doing it for charity. I think I made a lot of money for the charity but I, I i i had this moment where i had enough letters that i had a real funny answer and i would have lost all the money but i already picked up the million and it was going to be that's the best prostitute i've had all month <laughs> right and, and i was like Fair come on <laughs> come on say it i think that one makes more sense <laughs> than the yeah. pineapple in my mouth yeah. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. people have said that more than the pineapple yeah 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. that's the that best. Was that a slogan for dole or something like that <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. Know. I, I think pineapple. it was the word ever in there i remember it. i don't think so i don't think so mike no i remember it took up the whole board yeah it was like all the letters <laughs> it yeah. was all the whole board you couldn't get a you couldn't get a letter wrong I kept on spinning letter. In the end, I hit the bankrupt thing, and even blah, 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 and I was acting like, ah oh, man, I would have got on the next one. <laughs> I didn't yeah. fucking know. <laughs> who was who was the original host of Jeopardy when it premiered in 1964? Was it Sandra Trebek? Sandra Trebek. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, but it, Art Fleming was the host uh, uh. from 1964 till 79. Then the show was gone, sort of dormant for five years, and then Trebek came on and hosted it till till he passed. From 84 on. That's a lot. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Tre- Trebek, Trebek does the wonderful thing where he could feign interest when he talks to people and he goes at this. He goes, he goes, so you have a funny story about the time that you worked on a farm and the person will be like this. Yeah, I, I went to milk the cow, but it turned out it was a bull. 
Which is actually a pretty funny story. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not that good. No, 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 no. It says here. Turns off, it turns off says, I was just wanking off a bull. No, 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 no. He, he usually goes, we used to do this on the road. It says here you're in the cross-country skiing. you are like, yeah, I just get on the skis and I just shuffle across into the woods and it's very calming. Yeah, well, maybe you can win some money here and go towards your skiing. Because I, 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 I do that. I have, I have an earpiece in for the 1% Club and i got to talk to 100 contestants and i got to ask the same three questions every time. And the questions are, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, what would you do with the money? And what's the other one I've got to ask? I fucking ask. Why are you here? I go, are you here with anyone? Right? Because yeah, there's always right. contestants. Often do shower. There's contestants <laughs> playing with each other. And, and, uh, and, and it's hard with 100 contestants an episode to vary those questions up. So I, I'm sure that people know they're going to be asked those questions. They always have something prepped. And occasionally I throw a curveball at one of them. I'll just go like this. And it never works for me. Because people go, why do you ask the same questions? Because if I go like this to a person who's got a camera on them for the first time, yeah. sometimes I go, what's your superpower? What are you better at than anyone else? Like, I just vary up the question like this. Yeah. They go, oh. yeah, that's, it's a lot of pressure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, a good listener? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good at public speaking. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what, the, the best I can get on my show is if you get someone who's super cocky, who thinks they're going to do brilliant, that's the person, and then you just wait yeah, for them to get yeah. knocked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, what was the famous quiz show scandal, and which popular game show was at the center of it? Um, tell us about this, Mike. Yeah, yeah, This uh, Jim nailed this one. This is Charles Ingram, who was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in the UK, and um, he wound up in a kind of coughing signal scandal with a couple of other people um and yeah where he would pretend oh i i don't know this one and maybe is this option that option and so yeah the way jim described it is uh is pretty much spot on yeah so that one hit that one out of the park he was oh. like he was like a military guy as well and like so so the mm -hmm. thing about it was when they went they used to blow that blow horn before the episode <laughs> the guy was going nowhere he was almost up to the 34 32 thousand dollar question he'd already used two out of his three lifelines he was about to hit the meaty bit of the quiz he was going nowhere he was he was maybe tapping out at 64 maybe right and then he just kept on plowing through and the way he was coming to the answers every time was like this i don't know <laughs> and then he's like ah d why not you're risking yeah. a lot of money that's why not yeah d so that was in the <laughs> u that was in the uk on who wants to be a millionaire correct yeah. that was yeah yeah and then yeah, the, and he got denied. The, he got denied the prize money, so they, they stripped him of his of his winnings. Um, uh, where a lot of the other kind of scandal ish things, people didn't get their prize money taken away from from them, but he uh, he did. Yeah. And is this a different one? Uh, there's another thing in it, the, the quiz quote quiz show scandal with twenty one. So is that like a, yeah, that is a, that is a completely different. Oh yeah, thing. what yeah, the, talk about that one. Yeah, so the the quiz show scandal of, with Twenty One and a few other shows was in the, at the in the late nineteen fifties, where in in order to get higher ratings, the television program itself was feeding answers to the contestants because pe they realized that people liked seeing the same person come back repeatedly to kind of keep their winning streak going. And so this one particular show called Twenty One had this guy on it named Herbert Stimple, who was. Uh, a guy from uh, this, this Jewish guy from Queens who was racking up money and then eventually his ratings sort of plateaued and they brought they found this Ivy League dude, Charles Van Doren, who came in to be uh, a contestant and they found him to be more telegenic and more charismatic and interesting. And so they essentially rigged they'd already been giving Stimple the answers for a few weeks. But then when his ratings weren't good anymore, they decided it was time to make him take a dive. And so they told him, OK, we're going to ask you this question. You have to get it wrong. And then they gave Van Doren the right answer. He got it right. You know, he went on a streak where he was getting answers for a while. And eventually this whole thing got uncovered and blew up into this huge scandal that had a you know congressional subcommittee investigating it. And it, they found out that there were a series of shows that were essentially giving people the answers uh, throughout to try to hold the public's interest uh, rather than leaving things up to chance uh 21 sort of became the the centerpiece of all of it because it was a little more extensive it's it's cheating and stuff like that and then also because it had this um the charles van doren character had become this guy had become quite a bit of a celebrity um and so it, and it that 
uh, show really made a big deal about the secrecy of its questions that they were delivered straight to the studio from a vault in Midtown Manhattan and stuff like that. So it uh, it looked a whole lot worse for them. But there were others like uh, Tic Tac Doe, I think the sixty four thousand dollar question as well. Um, and so this this more or less changed game shows for pretty much the rest of their existence. Wow. So the thing is with the, the game shows is the uh, more money you give away, the more viewers. It's good for ratings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People love to see winners. Yeah. Which, in, in, but apart, okay, but there are exceptions to that rule. So there's very rarely do you see someone win on a Who, who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Very hard. I, but I'll they say, win a million dollars that they win, whereas on Family Feud they win a lot, but it's only 25000 So I think it's maybe you win a lot or you win big. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, or you got to, but you still got to give it away every now and again. Like yeah. you can, you you the the one percent club gives away substantially more money, I believe, than Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We give, we give away a hundred grand on the regular, at least ten times to every every one time they win the million dollars, at least minimum. Yeah, um, but there are exceptions. Like the Chase is an interesting one. You know, the Chase is your number one uh, game show at the moment in Britain and in Australia. And you, do you watch The Chase, mate? I love The Chase. I don't know. Sorry. The um, the British game show that's on now that I guess I'm most familiar with is Only Connect, but that's like a whole different kind well, of the, thing. The, but they had the American Chase as well. There was a, a, who was the name of that blonde girl? I quite fancy her. Oh, she, she's, um, she's Alice. The, uh, is it, I don't know. Is who it Alice and Sweeney? I don't know, or? but my, my wife used to get upset whenever no, The Chase came on because I became an old man. Oh, she's wearing a sleeveless <laughs> top. That's... Uh, <laughs> I became like a pervy old man. It's nice when she has her arms out. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but I'm a big fan of her. Um, oh, Brooke Burns. Just yeah, yeah. She's a nice lady. Yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nothing she, wrong with her. Bloody, nothing wrong with her, mate. Anyway, so uh, so the chase, the chase is a different one because the chase, I don't think they want people to win. Like people go for the different chases. And they say, have you watched The Chase? Yeah, I've watched it. The yeah. Chase is a banger. The Chase, so is a, the Chase is on every day on Channel 7 in Australia, every single day. And I think it tops the ratings every day. It's like everyone, it does every, well here. everyone yeah. watches it. Yeah, but it's only it's only a once a week thing every now and again. In Australia, it's fucking 365 days a year, every fucking five o'clock, mm. you're watching, watching The Chase. So how did this, the quiz show scandal, the 21 scandal, impact the game show industry? Um, yeah, so uh, for a brief period of time, the quiz shows basically disappeared. Nobody wants to watch them. It went from where at the height of the scandal, right before it broke, you had NBC, I think like almost 20% of their uh, prime of their schedule was game shows. Uh, and so those virtually disappear. Um, and what happens is they move to, uh, they used to be called quiz shows. They moved them to daytime out of prime time, they call the start calling them game shows mm. and sort of getting to what Jim was just talking about. They wind up changing up what kinds of questions that they're asking. So this is where the price is right really takes off rather than asking people really obscure questions about history or opera or something like that. They're asking them how much a tube of toothpaste is. They yeah. ask them things that you don't need to rig anymore. And so it trades in a different kind of knowledge than what people had before. So instead of like real academic knowledge, you get something like Family Feud. That's your knowledge of other people, your, you know, your human knowledge, or you get more, more basic academic knowledge like how much is this detergent and so that's when they come back yeah. and so people because they realize people don't really care about about knowing the answer they just care about watching people win and that's um, when they were and called it's not shows, really right? until yeah. okay. jeopardy when that stuff kind of com starts coming back to have specialized knowledge being a thing um and but of course jeopardy has a way less suspense and and energy it's it's the more um what um the the more refined game show uh but then something like millionaire yeah they don't give away a lot of money or large sums but it's so it's all about the drama and the suspense rather than being super fast paced millionaires about dragging out everything for the the maximum uh suspense hey there all right that was my rage expression I, i'm a big i'm a big fan when i was a kid because you know we didn't have porn and stuff i used to like the prices right models yeah Big fan. We got, we got a trend here going. You'd have your yeah. And also, there was one on Sale of the Century. You didn't have that game over. It was an Australian one, Sale of the Century. Delvin Delaney. Yeah, you've talked about her. From the 70s, man. <laughs> you've talked about her several times. On oh, the show. mate. Delvin Delaney. When you're a 10 year old boy in Australia, that does something to you. Yeah. Her husband just died. It gives me hope. Speaking of. Well, that's the show. <laughs> okay, sorry. 
<laughs> well, wasn't Sale of the Century that show where they would give away ridiculous prizes where someone would win like the deed to an oil well in Texas uh, <laughs> or something like that? No, this was just a. Re- oh, do you remember? Jim doesn't know. He was, no, 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 he, was, was... he was jerking off the Delvin Delaney. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't watch. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Delvin, mate. <laughs> uh, okay, so speaking of women, who was the first female host? She of- married the guy who who co-wrote Crocodile Dundee. Nothing wrong with Delvin. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Delvin. <laughs> Who was the first female host of the primetime game show? Jim said Joan Rivers. Um, Your favorite. Oh, that's a great guess. Um, yeah, the, uh, Arlene Francis hosted the show called Blind Date in 1949. They, yeah. they always, because, okay, so they call, they call it the dating game. Is Blind Date and the dating game the same thing? Because No. Because in Australia, we used to call it perfect match, but you wouldn't get to see the person you were, you were dating, right? So you know the show I'm talking about, right? Where they have the, mm-hmm. the one contestant, they have a barrier, they have three people behind the barrier, and they ask a question, yes. uh, if, if you were to cook me a meal, what would it be? And the guy would be like, I'm from Manchester, and I'd be too busy eating you out. And then he'd get up and dance <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, I like and she go. I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. And that was hosted by. That was hosted what was that by. Uh, that, that blind date they call uh, it in Britain, but you call it the dating game. And that was. I don't think in 1949 that was this game. That was hosted by. No, that was hosted by Cilla Black, and Cilla Black was a <laughs> woman from Liverpool who used to hang out with the Beatles and used to sing like around all the clubs and stuff. She was good friends with the Beatles, and she was just a Scouser lady who used to go. Oh, that's a bit saucy. Scouser? So is you know, the, ter- it's not a derogatory term, but it's what they like. It's, it's people from Liverpool. The nickname is Scouser. Scouser. Okay. Um, who was Chuck Barris? Not the king of rock and roll. We know that. But what was his importance? Oh, yeah. yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good se- Yeah. Well, that's a good segue. He is, is the guy who created the dating game uh, oh, yeah. and, the, and the newlywed game. I, and okay. So he's the guy who thought he was the, a the fucking show. He, he thought he was a spy. No, or something. Mike's answering now. You don't get any points. No, he, he thought he was <laughs> yeah. a spy, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he wrote a, a, a memoir uh, where he claimed that <laughs> while he was creating all these game shows, he was also a contract killer for the CIA. <laughs> yeah, and that, didn't George, did George Clooney direct that movie? Well, he wasn't in it, right? There was a movie. There was a movie about. He it. did. Well, he was. Yeah, he was in it. He played like his uh, CIA handler, but then he also directed it. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. Ben Stiller in that? Oh no, that's about the bloke who wrote Alf. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, that's a one. permanent midnight. Yeah, yeah, that's a different one. I don't remember even the name of the of the movie that the Chuck Barris movie. But was it Confessions, oh, uh, of, a Confessions of a Dangerous Mind? Oh yeah, there you go. I remember seeing it, but sounds cool. Yeah, um, you're already through the next round, Jim. You don't get points for that one. Though, so. Yeah, it's good that I remembered it though. But <laughs> you did. I could see. You go. <laughs> yeah. All right. What game show involved young contestants navigating a maze filled with booby traps? Double Dare. Uh, yeah, he, uh, that was my first guess too until I looked at it more closely. But it's uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple, which was yeah. also on Nickelodeon. Oh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, that yes. came so after badly. Double Dare. I've seen that. Double Dare looked like it was a lawsuit waiting to happen, didn't it? <laughs> There's like kids flipping off things, landing on their necks. And, and slime doesn't cushion your fall that much. No. When did slime become such a thing for children? Nickelodeon, I guess. I believe it was uh, You Can't Do That on TV from Canada. Okay. And they, if yeah. you say that word, they would pour slime Yeah, that's right. You. Hmm. And Alanis Morissette was on it. What was the object of the game? Bumper Stompers? Do you know this, Mike? I'm not going to repeat Jim's answer. It's it's crude. <laughs> yeah, they would get uh, personalized license plates up on the screen and there would be some sort of quiz or the question would be, the answer would be whatever the abbreviated what, what thing wanker on, the bu- drove on the bumper this. sticker would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's something I would do. Yeah. Right, yeah. And then the first game show to win a daytime Emmy Award for best game show. Was it Wheel of Fortune? Price is right. Oh, sorry. I um, that's right. I think it, I just I got a little delayed and uh, garbled. What uh, first game show to win a daytime Emmy award for best game show? What year was it? Oh, in? Jim said. Sure. Uh, yeah, this one's Password in 1974. Uh, um, yeah, right, they should get that game show now. I never get it right. And then <laughs> like, he texts me, "What's my password to this again?" I I, 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 put, I put a password in. I go back the next day, and it's that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> like I just wrote it down. 
Oh God, that would be a wonderful show. <laughs> That'd be so great. <laughs> just people trying to log yeah, into yeah. their, their right, email like, that they haven't used in a Point way. a gun to somebody's head and log into your Gmail or die. Oh uh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Log into your hotmail from yeah. ten years ago. Oh, oh. No, I mean there's no way, but it's no, like that you, one the stuff from the stuff from twenty years ago I can oh, remember. Yeah, that's true. Because because that was the, the OG password. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that one was a simple the, word. Uh, Jim. <laughs> yeah, but the prize might just be you don't have to reset your password. I mean that no, might the, be better the, than the Yeah, the prize would be we'll tell you your passwords. You if you know your passwords for Netflix, we'll tell you your password for Hulu. Oh. <laughs> what a game show. Write it up, Jim. Which game show has won the most daytime Emmys for the best game show and how and how many was it? Jim said Price is right. Uh, yeah, I believe that one's second most. Uh, but uh, Jeopardy is the winner there and it has 19. I said I threw you whoa, off. Yeah. It goes on after <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune, which you claim isn't during the day. And I know the, the answer before this, I said, hey, Wheel of Fortune. I didn't. Fuck. I don't know the answers. And then it's I said, fucking I did say out loud. You can hear on the podcast. I think I messed you up on this. Yeah. Is what I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's still messed up. Right, yeah. What game show thing. gave Jimmy Kimmel his start in television? Let's make a deal. Uh, it's, uh, it's when Ben Stein's money. Uh, he was the co-host with Ben Stein on that Comedy Central show. That's yeah, a good one. when who's Ben Stein? Mm. He's he, the guy who did the Clear Eyes commercials. Yeah, he what? he's he's like a political pundit. I think he was right. Or wasn't he Nixon speech? Yeah, writer? he worked. Yeah. yeah, he worked in the Nixon and Ford administrations um, for a, for a time, and then uh, but he wound up in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. He's the the teacher. The anyone anyone? Like oh, that, that guy. Yeah. Ferris Bueller. That's, um, oh, he worked for yeah, Nixon. Yeah, he sort of parlayed that into oh, that uh, into this job where he I think they give away twenty five hundred dollars on that show. Yeah. Um, he was yeah. the, he was, the, was his he, money. He was the teacher in the Wonder Years. Yeah, he's now, been he's acting a lot of stuff. I, I want to yeah. get into the Wonder Years for a second. The, new, the news, it's all right. The new season's all right. I was a big fan of the Wonder Years, but when the Wonder Years first aired, it was going back twenty years in time. Mm -hmm. The Wonder Years now should be like it should start with nine eleven. Yeah, those were the good old days. Yeah. Well, no, 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 because the Wonder Years starts with the Vietnam War and Winnie's brother uh, dying, right? Okay. Uh, but they're still in suburbia. People have their childhood, and everything see, keeps going on. That's what it's meant to be. It's well, meant where to did be. They start it. The they idea start. of the Wonder Years is meant to be a person my age uh -huh. looking back on, well, younger than me, a person in their thirties looking back on their teen years uh -huh. and going, "Oh yeah, the first time I had a kiss, the first time I had a this, the first time I had a that." The Wonder Years now, the person who's talking about it has to be fucking in their fucking sixties. Okay. Well, we have to what get you, these questions. What are you doing, so we, ABC? What are you doing? We can't get into what are you no, doing? I'm, I'm livid. That, so. What are you doing? <laughs> livid. Like, like, you don't have to reinvent the fucking wheel here. I've given you the fucking temp template. <laughs> you gave him that. Hire you. you gave him the password game show. They're set. What is the most expensive prize ever given away on a game show? Jim said an expensive car. This is where Jim, you started to do well. It's an expensive yeah. car Ferrari, but yeah. it was actually a... Yeah, I, I gave him a, ha a half credit on this one. Uh, it, I don't know what half of these words mean, but it was an Audi R8 V8 Spider Quattro S Tronic yeah. that was given away nice. on the Price is Right in 2013. Yeah, was that a like hundred and twenty thousand dollar car, hundred and ten thousand dollar car? I, yeah, yeah, just yeah, like it ranges from about one twenty to one one fifty, one sixty, depending on the options. Yeah, it's a good one. They don't give you the, the good options though on game shows. They, they, do you ever see that three wheel car? They were trying to give away the yellow one. It was given away by the trans Slingshot. person. Yeah, there's a documentary on HBO. No, it was a car that was never made. There was this. There was this uh. trans lady. That's not like the, but it was like a con man who became a woman who then started up a car company and then they were giving them away on the Price is Right and the cars didn't have engines oh, in really? them or shit. They just hadn't made them yet. <laughs> all, all they had was all they had was the shell of the car. And then they just pushed it out onto the set, and they gave away like several of them. Oh, you mm. should have answered that as one of the as, as yeah, one of the answers scandal. for the scandals. Well, it wasn't Price is Right's fault; it was the card Still company. Scandal. Said, do you know about that car? I now that you're describing it, I do remember hearing about this with the, yeah the shell of the car. <laughs> yeah, 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 the shell of the car, and yeah, it's a, it's a yellow three wheel car. It looks but, funky. I know what you're talking about. They, yeah. yeah, they they. The, the what? The Dale. The Dale. Dale. Yeah, go Google the Dale. The Dale car is a fucking banger. And they test drove one of them. They got a little engine in there. They kept on tipping over when they turned around corners. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. my god! It's like it's like yeah. a yellow submarine. Yeah, yeah, that would give it. Oh uh, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you don't get it. Yeah. Oh jeez, don't yeah. exist. Sorry. It's, yeah, you get. Uh, okay. Better off if you don't get it. Um, we <laughs> talked about the UK version of the Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. It's being scandal. made here in LA, the Dale. It's not being made at all. No, but that's where uh, they're making it. <laughs> just making the shells. 
Uh, what game show once hosted a serial killer during his killing spree? Jim said the dating game. That was correct, right? Mark? Yeah, absolutely right. Nailed it. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess uh, there's a movie that's going to be coming out about it uh, later this fall that uh, Anna Kendrick directed uh, called Woman of the Hour. I uh, saw the, Tor- the Toronto Film Festival right now. I oh, it was a woman that was killing people? No, no, I, no. Yeah. Just the. Uh, the no it was a it was a guy but the because the it's the bachelors um and then but uh, i think it's the main character is the 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 bachelorette uh who's choosing the guys it it was a 20 for 20 or so now in your opinion game you're a game show expert right so in your opinion is shows like the bachelor are considered to be a game show because i consider that to be a game show yeah yeah, Absolutely. Is, right? Yeah. All of those real the current like a lot of the things that we call reality shows now are really just game shows, Survivor. whether that's Survivor, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Project Runway. I don't, know, well, like I, don't game shows. I don't watch reality shows. I don't watch anything Top below chef. deck or anything like that. But if there's a competition involved, I'll watch it. I need to see a, a winner at the end. Yeah. And, and yeah, all the cooking shows, I guess, then are all game shows. Yeah, they're all yeah. Yeah. Master Chef game show, they're yeah. all game shows. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Iron Chef, uh, yeah, Bobby prizes. Flay, all there's of those prizes. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did the game shows evolve in the digital age with the rise of online quizzes and apps? Jim said HQ trivia, Shazam, beat Shazam. So your book yeah. is about HQ trivia, or wait, no, you were in the. I'm sorry, in the documentary about the what. I yeah, used to play yeah, that the all the talks time. talks about yeah. uh, HQ trivia a little bit at the end, but uh, yeah, the documentary is that I'm in is talking about just that uh, the rise and fall of that what, that app. What happened? Because I, I remember there was a moment where the whole country was playing that. It felt we like. were playing it. Yeah. We were playing it backstage before we walked on stage. Yeah, no, and then the writers' I getting, room. I was getting halfway yeah, yeah, through. Yeah. I was getting halfway through it, like ah, <laughs> ah <laughs> and then they're like, please welcome to the stage, yeah, Jeffries. Ah. <laughs> You people cost yeah, me it, money. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. That was a, a, a real thing for, I mean, I, I work at a at a high school and I mean, we had to really crack down on this because it was at, uh, well, it was at two o'clock and, and eight o'clock or something like that. Central time yeah. was there were these games that were happening live. And uh, the guys who created it had created Vine earlier, the, the, the that six second yeah. uh, video mm-hmm. app. Um, and yeah, so it was a huge thing, and it was, I guess, getting so big that it was growing faster than they could build the, a lot of the infrastructure to support it. And then the it's also taken apart by the typical uh, Silicon Valley startup infighting and um, yeah. you know stuff like that. It just kind of yeah, it imploded more or less. Because um, as it got and, bigger, there was yeah. there was moments I think we'd be playing it and be like, all right, we gotta. Got technical difficulty here. Yeah, like, hold it, yeah. yeah. The hold documentary up. is yeah, called exactly. Glitch, so uh, yeah. Okay. Watch now, it. It's good. Mm-hmm. Now, it. what happens now? Because I, I, I know, I know, there's game shows coming out that are going to be huge money, like the biggest prize money ever is coming out in different game shows and stuff like that. Um, but what happens now that we have people like Mr. Beast who are giving away houses and they're giving away millions of dollars, like online? Do the networks move with that, or, or will it always be a separate thing? You you, you know about Mr. Beast? No. He's like a YouTuber. yeah, oh, I do. Yes, unfortunately, my my kids got really into him during the pandemic, so I um yeah, I'm I, he's been a guest in my house more than I'd like. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, but but um, like like he gives away much bigger prizes than the television does. He does. Yeah. Yeah. And there is and some of it is gamified and some of it is is more, I guess, the more or there's some altruism tied to it sometimes. And I think this is something that people are still trying to figure out. HQ was the first thing that really caught figured out kind of how to combine the old model of the game show as a television broadcast with the era of social media and apps and things like that by simply having the turning the phone into the interactive tv set and the the things on on youtube are able to basically they're doing short episodes of game shows um and they're finding different game formats to play around with and but the networks are still by and large following that older model of having a big set with a traditional kind of kind of show but um but i think it's really only a matter of time before all of these different where before they figure out some way to either move game shows entirely to online or find some way of getting the online component into the broadcast show um it's just going to take somebody to kind of crack that nut and then everybody else will be all over it too yeah um because the things that Mr. Beast is doing, sorry, things that Mr. Beast is doing are basically 
radio used to do those, but radio sort of did. But radio used to hold a ton of game shows where yeah, it was yeah. like you had to leave Touch your hand car. on a yeah. car, and if your hand comes off the car and you get to piss every now and again, you've got to stay in a cubicle inside a shopping mall and you can't leave, yeah. and people can come and see you, and you're not allowed to brush your teeth and all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, he, miss- and he edits it down to like 10 minutes. Oh, it's like two days worth of... Yeah, I miss yeah. those. Yeah, now I've I've, I've, so I've watched the Mr. Beast, and I'm like, nah, I get why this is so big. Like yeah, people yeah. Are like want to watch people win a house or a million dollars or whatever. But, um, oh, what real life game show host played the game show host in The Running Man? You didn't remember? I don't remember his name, but I, I know what he looks like. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Richard Dawson, the original Family Feud host. Yeah, Richard he, Dawson. He, he was the. Uh, we were talking about him yesterday in the pre-interview. He was a guy. He was a little bit. He did a he lot of kissing. Pretty hands. Yeah, he was like, "Hey, like, hey like, oh, have like, you have you ever seen the the creepy Canadian game show host oh, with God, the kids? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, <laughs> that one's right. He's always asking like the the ten year old girls for a kiss. He's like this. Why don't you uh, give me a kiss? Uh, uh, I was like, uh, well, Richard uh, Dawson was, was he? It was like pretty. I don't know. That's what he was. I, I remember him just always getting a kiss from yeah, every lady. Yeah, always. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. It became a, a a thing where people, you know, contestants knew. Well, this is what this is what's coming, right? And I guess some would. <laughs> I just, I you know, be excited it, about it, and some wouldn't. When, yeah. when the in the one percent club, right? Someone wins the hundred grand. And they're all excited, jumping up and down. I go, congratulations. And I'll walk up to them. And, and your, your reaction is you want to hug a person who's just won 100 grand who's jumping up and down. They probably want to hug. But I, you'll see me. I just sort of grab their hands and go, yay. <laughs> <laughs> no hugging. Because <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Um, well, yeah, because you'd have people jump up and basically accost Bob Barker if they got oh, yeah. called up yeah. to yeah, the yeah, stage. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, so they, just, they just run up and, yeah, off they go. That's true. It goes the other way sometimes, yeah. Um, some names, some recent game show controversies or scandals. Jim made up a few here. What, what are some ones that we should remember? Yeah, well, I guess uh, there's the I'm, one of the more recent ones involved the rotating hosts of Jeopardy, where one of the executive producers of Jeopardy, Mike oh, Richards, I just said, that. "Oh, you know what? I'll follow Trebek," oh, and yeah. people were not wild about that <laughs> for obvious reasons. Oh, and right, then yeah. it kind of came out that he was, um, you know, had had some accusations of of sexual harassment and <laughs> um, at previous jobs or at the current job. Um, he had been sued earlier in 2010, I think, by one of Barker's beauties for um, essentially firing her or not having her back after maternity leave. Um, and so, yeah, so his track record was was not super good. And that all kind of came out again when he was hosted Jeopardy for like a week or, or something, a week mm. or two. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, the other more current one, I guess, involves Vanna White, who it turns out hasn't gotten a raise in many many years and was holding out on her contract uh to try to get get a raise where i mean she still makes a, a quarter of what pat sajak makes per episode but she did wind up getting a raise uh from we talked about yeah but i will show. say this and Vanna is a lovely lady lovely lady but uh, with the robots coming to take our jobs hers <laughs> should have gone a long time ago <laughs> is there a more pointless job on earth than what vanna white has to do she just touches letters she used to spin them yep and even before computers, they could have got the machine to go like that, yeah. right? Like that. But th- now she just touches him. Like, come on now. You enjoy seeing her, though. Like, it, it adds she, a human element to the board. She is a big yeah. part of the brand. I mean, yeah. like... Hey, she, hey, like, hey, hey, you're, you're worth what people want to pay. Like, yeah. like people love her. People love her. But she, she is pointless. <laughs> Not in life. <laughs> On the show, she, she, the, the very little point. Yeah, we get what you're saying. <laughs> in life, it'd be really harsh. In life, she's, yeah. no, she's a lovely lady. She's a lovely, warm lady. Yeah. I'm better. Lovely yeah. lady. Yeah, she, she consoled you after your loss. She comes up and she goes, so you got it wrong. And I'm like, I did. <laughs> and she's like this, oh, well, it can be tricky up there. And she sort of stands there a bit... It's you want to be still on that range. You want to be, you want to, you want to be a size three or whatever she is, friend of Vanna White's. Yeah, and then just go up to every now and again and go. I need a green dress. Let me go to the warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, uh, this is part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our guests to give us some obscure, interesting fact about this subject that the audience can use to impress people. What do you got for us? Yeah, well, I guess a short one while we're uh, we can do another after a while. We're talking about Vanna White. Is she was actually a contestant on The Price Is Right in 1980. 
prior to getting hired to do Wheel of Fortune, uh, you can see clips of her getting called up to contestants row and uh, she doesn't get up on the stage, but she was a she was a game show contestant. And so she's one of the people who's, I guess, been on both sides of of the game show. This is so Um, weird because I was like. I found that out just the other day and I was like, how did I find that out? And it's like Bob Barker died and she put that up on her social. Uh, okay. Uh, so that makes sense. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and then I guess there's the... Um there's there's a there's a guy who hacked the price is right and i'm not the i'm sorry there's a guy who hacked press your luck uh and there's also another guy who got the perfect bid on a showcase showdown on price is right we could go with either one of those mm. or there's a real cringy uh story about the price is right yeah do that um, one the yeah, cringy one we like cringy <laughs> do the coke yeah. well so i guess while yeah so this is another well, this is one of barker's beauties her name was janice pennington and she had had her husband her second husband this guy named fritz disappeared while he was out mountain climbing in 1975 did he fall off the ledge because someone got the number wrong (laughs) Uh, well uh, it kind of goes there um uh, they they had this game on on uh the price is right that had a mountain climber uh, called cliffhangers who would move up the up the thing and then if you or you tried to try to keep him from falling off the cliff and if you got the numbers wrong he would inch closer to the edge and in 76 while he's still declared missing they are playing this game and she's on stage and the host who wasn't barker at the time uh but the host decides i'm gonna call this guy fritz and he keeps going up and then he goes off the side and the host is you know oh down goes fritz and she (laughs) you know runs off stage in tears um and they kept playing this game (laughs) for a while while she was still on here and um you know while this guy's declared missing and presumed dead well, that was cunty um, of the just, guy to yeah. call him fritz he must have so known up. he must have known what he was doing well I, I guess yeah what found what what comes out later is that they speculate that he was working with the cia to establish mountain passes and mountain bases between afghanistan and pakistan and was likely killed by soviet forces um so like the the it's story the, the plot thickens um okay. along the way just uh, that so this guy was probably a spy stay at home and shag your yeah. barker's beauty <laughs> like you're already we you need to go out for uh, my friends matt and greg were on the what's the game show with the doors you unlock them whatever that game show is they were on that I think maybe Price is Right or something Mm -hmm. Um, and so my friend Matt had the right key went up to the correct door but it just wouldn't open for whatever reason and behind it was a car Mm -hmm. and even though he did everything right and just whatever weird glitch didn't let the door open they still didn't let him have the car even though he did everything right it's gotta open the door and and Greg was like I've never seen Matt get so close to maybe killing a person (laughs) at that moment um well, Mike Miley, thanks for being here. The uh, name of his book yeah. is Truth and Consequences, Game Shows in Fiction and Film. You can see him on the CNN documentary Glitch, The Rise and Fall of HQ Trivia. And then find him uh, through his website, MikeMiley.com, or on Twitter at Mike C. Miley. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Oh, thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Really nice to meet you all. Thank you. I love this subject. Big fan. Uh, if you're ever uh, at a party and someone comes up to you and says... Um, uh, um, Bob Barker was mean about a hiker in the. That uh, wasn't Bob uh, Barker. That's why you go. I don't know about uh, that. Sorry, I interrupted you. Sorry. Good night, Australia. Yeah, what a terrible forest. Ending by forest. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>